Canelo Alvarez is the pound for pound best against European fighters. You could say he pound for pound. He pound for right. pound against European fighters. Just not the best pound right, for right. pound fighter yeah. worldwide. He never fights undefeated black fighters. He never fights undefeated Mexican fighters. Only undefeated white fighters. If your last name is Smith, you got a possible chance of fighting Canelo Alvarez because he done fought the whole Smith family. I don't even know half of them guys, and he done fought every single Smith you heard of. And when it came to the Charlo twins, he orders witness protection. We clearly know what time it is. If Charlo wants to fight Canelo Alvarez, if Benavidez want to fight Canelo Alvarez, they need to change their last name to Smith. That's the only way. Because like I said before, this man done fought the whole Smith family, but he won't fight the Charlos of the world. He won't fight the undefeated black fighters, the Andres of the world, the Charlos of the world, the Lions of the world. He's still avoiding them to this, this day. day, day, day. To this day. Five years in the making, we head into the sixth year, and he's still ducking to, to this day. day, day. To this day. <laughs> and he'd rather fight Ivini instead. You know what I'm saying? A fighter coming off a loss instead of Benavides. Talking on recent competition he's had, how can you guys consider this guy Alvini and Smith better fighters than Deryachenko? In my eyes, Deryachenko beat the holy hell out of freaking Triple G. Gennady Golovkin gave up his IBF belt when he wanted to become undisputed. He gave up his IBF right. belt to avoid Deryachenko right. at first, right? Then Canelo yeah. gave up his IBF belt as well. Then Gennady Golovkin only accepted the Deviachenko fight for the IBF vacant strap. And he lost the fight. You see why Gennady Golovkin avoided Deviachenko in the past. And Cherry picked instead when Canelo tested positive for steroids. Because the man clearly got beat by Deviachenko. Right? So, like I said time and time again, at the end of the day, or at least the night, that's already question mark next to Canelo Alvarez's name. The fact that he felt steroids. So that actually... Push you down on the pound for pound list. Then him ducking, put him down even further. And he ain't just ducking one body, two bodies. Man, he ducking everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Canelo is not just ducking one body. He ducking everybody. Benavidez, Charlo, Andre, <laughs> unless you're European or a fighter on the hopeless or a fighter that's beatable. Because, see, Canelo, he speaks in code. Canelo will say things like, oh, I don't like that fighter style. I don't like Andre's style. It's boring. I don't like him moving around. That's my kryptonite. That's what he meant. That's the translation. Because, see, how are you the best pound for pound number one fighter in the world, but you can't solve every single puzzle? You can't solve a puzzle that's moving around? The target got to be in front of you for you to win? So we got to mm -hmm. change the rules. We got to bend the rules, see how they bend and change the rules for these fighters on the hope list. Canelo pretty much said, I can't beat that style. I'd rather fight fighters that block punches with their face. I'd rather fight fighters like Gennady Golovkin who block punches with their face. I don't like a fighter like Andre who's slick and got footwork and I can't chase him and he gonna school me and walk me into shots. Oh, no, I don't like that type of a fighter. That, that type of a fighter could beat me. I'd rather fight fighters that are tailor-made for me. How the hell you pound for pound number one when you gotta pick and choose what style you prefer? Oh, you gotta put your hand down for me to fight you. Yo, know, if you put your hand up, oh, I ain't gonna fight you. Nah, bro. A fight is a fight. There ain't no rules. Exactly. As long nobody cheating, as long nobody's throwing low blows and so on and so forth, then it's an even playing field. You can't tell a man how to fight. Oh yeah, don't move around, bro. I can't. I can't win if you move around. I only can win if you come forward or, or stay in front of me. I can't win if you move from punches like Floyd Mayweather. I could only win if you block with your face like Gennady Golovkin did. Come on, man. We already know what time it is. They speak with code, but I can see right through that. And that's why they hate the yep. truth. That's why they hate Aki. But the truth is undefeated, yep. Yep. just like Aki. That's why I always knock out decaf left and right. Always easy work. they rather call Charlo a nobody. When Benavidez Sr., he came yeah. out and said, Charlo is more dangerous than Canelo for my son. And I agree with him 100%. Because Canelo is actually tailor-made for Charlo. See, Canelo is a short fighter. He's vulnerable for uppercuts by Charlo. He's also vulnerable for the jab by Charlo. And a guy like Charlo, who's going to be able to keep him at range, who control range beautifully, that's Canelo Alvarez kryptonite. And that's why 
Canelo Alvarez ordered witness protection on Charlo. And, you know, Benavidez is also mm -hmm. a tough fight for Canelo Alvarez. That's why Benavidez Sr. came out and said, Charlo is more dangerous than a Canelo Alvarez. He knows Charlo is a better fighter. And guess what? Unlike Canelo, Benavidez, he got Mexican heart. The man said, I'll fight Charlo. I'm willing to fight Charlo. If they both willing to fight each other. They both willing to fight Canelo, but Canelo ain't willing to fight them. Canelo rather fight Avini instead of fighting Benavidez, a fighter coming off a loss. Canelo rather fight Fielding in order to witness protection, buying, he purchased. This man purchased a WBC bill, a franchise bill, a French fries bill, a witness protection bill to avoid Charlo. He surrendered his bill. Back in the day, like I said before, back in the day when countries used to surrender, like for example, during World War I or World War II, when Hitler, a lot of countries gave up their land because they didn't want no smoke. They didn't feel like they could win the war. That's when you surrender. That's when you wave the white flag. That's Canelo Alvarez. You know, when the lion come through, he don't want to hop in the lion then. You know what Canelo Alvarez wanted to do? Canelo Alvarez, he waved the white flag. He surrendered. Do you know what that means? You give up your territory. You give up your land. You quit. A real champion will never surrender. A real champion will always defend his title. He will never request a fake belt and be recognized as a fake champion, not a real champion, just to avoid a fighter. Like I said, Charlo had a dangerous mandatory like J-Rock William. He didn't move out of 154 until he fought him. He fought him, then he moved up. Right? That's the difference between Charlo yeah. and Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez got told by Charlo, I fight you in Mexico City. In other words, Charlo pretty much told him, man, I'm more Mexican than you. I'll fight you in Mexico City. And he'd rather fight Avini instead. He don't want to fight Benavidez. He want to fight yeah. Avini instead in Mexico City. He want to fight Smith. He don't fought the whole Smith family. And he fought him, you know, last week in Texas when Charlo is from Texas. That's his home. Shout out to B. Brown for the super chat. I appreciate the love and support. You know what I'm saying? And these, Canelo, and these Canelo fans want to justify that, man. And Canelo's just making them look so bad. They making up excuses that Canelo ain't even making. You know, when Canelo get asked about just Charlo, like yeah, like when Canelo get asked about Charlo, he don't say, oh, who did Charlo beat? He ain't fought nobody. No, nah, he don't say that. Canelo don't even answer the question. He be like, I don't know when that fight going to happen and walks out. But I bet you he know when the Avini fight going to happen. I bet you that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he don't know when the Charlo fight mm -hmm. gonna happen. He'd rather fight an Errol Spence instead because, like I said before, he don't want to hop in in the lion's den with a real lion his size. I have never, like in my life of watching boxing when I was, you know, was growing up, that any pound for pound fighter fights weak competition. It's supposed to be higher tier competition and. For what Canelo is doing, he's uh, destroying the sport and um, he's making a bad influence to encourage probably future up and coming fighters that probably look up to him to do the same exact thing. And I just really fear that in the future, those newer fighters that, that follow in his footsteps will do the same exact thing by ducking their best competition and they'll still be labeled as pound for pound number one fighters why didn't he have that same energy when charlo was his mandatory and literally his brother was calling out canelo at 154 on top of that with andrade and he still never even fought either three of them so that just shows that canelo he is straight up ducking his best contemporaries. He does not want to be tested and he is a pure disgrace to the Mexican heritage. And when he says that he's doing it for his um, Latinos, who, who the hell are you to be fighting for Latinos? You're not doing anything for them. If Miguel Cotto did the same thing, what Canelo did, he would be hated by Puerto Ricans by tomorrow. Miguel right. Cotto would never step down. He will always step up. The only thing that I would ever criticize Cotto for is that he should have fought Floyd Mayweather back uh, back um, in his prime. But either way, it's just that 
you know, if you want to become great, you have to fight the best to be great. And Canelo has proven that he does not want to be great. What the hell is Canelo? You ain't got no Mexican blood. You got white blood. Um, <laughs> and uh, he needs to start stepping it up or else um, I think it's time for new media to keep exposing him and uh, bring his name down because uh, you are not the best fighter in the world. You are the biggest ducker in the world. I think that's a, uh, that's a very a, accurate statement. A, a harsh statement, yep. but the truth does hurt sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And definitely new media coming out with a pound for pound list, awards, and all the above. At the end of the year, we're going to announce it on new media. So we're going to come out with a pound for pound list, a legit pound for pound list that you could count on. But it's going to be backed up with facts, not feelings. So be on the lookout for that. How did you choose Lomachenko? I did not choose him. He requested, Canelo requested. So we sent out a vote and we analyzed his history. Ooh, Canelo and Lomachenko requested? Absolutely. Ooh, he just made headlines. Lomachenko. <laughs> he just made headlines. Lomachenko, uh -huh. top rank, requested. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, we analyzed the request. Uh -huh. Top of the top. Find the franchise belt. Can you define it? The franchise is not a belt, it's not a championship. It's a designation given to elite, unique fighters who carry the industry of the sport of boxing. Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko are two sensational fighters who carry the industry. Ask, ask Cameron Duncan, do top rank have like a, a, a columns of fighters? And they say, we don't want this guy fighting the black fighter. We don't want this fighter fighting a Mexican fighter and so on and so forth. You're going to get into the racial stuff, huh? No, I'm not. I'm just, I, I'm asking. Uh, that's a theory there by the greatest matchmaker, probably in my opinion ever. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not going to mention his name either, but uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And, uh, he used to have a thing up on his board, NBF, no black fighters. Mm -hmm. And when I was taught to bring up a fighter, um, you know, and again, it's just, he used to say to me, you can go anywhere in the country, and I'm going to leave it at this, and I won't go into a long discussion, mm -hmm. because yeah. people are people in God's eyes, and yeah. we're all the same. He used to say to me, you can go anywhere into a city in America mm -hmm. or anywhere in the world and ask a white guy, and he didn't say any other, he didn't say anything about a Hispanic, anything. ask a white guy to throw a jab, and half of them are going to turn backwards and throw it like a girl and everything. Ask any black man on a street corner in any city in the world. And they will snap out a jab and a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I used to laugh. He said, they're just more physically gifted. Mm -hmm. And he said, and so they have speed and better to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal. So I said, okay. And I've lived by that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, you know, I don't want to sound like some weird guy, but, um, you know, you're trying to be safe with your guys. And so, yeah, yeah, there is a thing about that, you know, but not in a bad way, in a very respectful way, you know, to be careful. So that's all. The last man even said they doing that to protect them. Right. Somebody beat them, but they don't get a belt. There you go. The franchise belt is protect them from the big black guys. <laughs>